police in Mombasa have killed a man they say is a terror suspect. The man was killed in an early morning raid at his house in Kibokoni area, where a grenade was also allegedly found. But the victim's family and human rights activists have criticized what they have interpreted as another extrajudicial killing, which disregarded the rule of law. And as Ferdinand Omondi reports, this latest event is casting a shadow on a police service that is looking increasingly trigger happy. <laughs> <laughs> the agony of Nadia Ahmed Mohammed was palpable, a pain few can understand. On the dawn of Sunday, police raided her home in the Floringi area of Kibokoni and shot her 26-year-old son dead as she watched. According to police, the deceased was a terror suspect. We had an intelligence information that uh, there are criminals. Part of them is a terrorist group uh, who, uh, who have been terrorizing people uh, here in Mombasa. Kitur added that they recovered a hand grenade in the house and are still in pursuit of a second suspect who escaped. He said they have intelligence that revealed the suspect had returned from Somalia where he had received training in extremism. Try to throw a grenade to our officers. Uh, that is the time our officers responded and you have seen. I was also shot. <laughs> but the family of the deceased strongly denies the allegations. They charged that the police in fact have harassed them, taken their mug shots, confiscated their phones and now killed one of them. They also claim they were coerced to sign an acknowledgement that the grenade was indeed recovered from the house. <laughs> Now, human rights organizations and a member of parliament want the police involved, investigated and charged in what they say will put a stop to extrajudicial killings and wanton harassment of families. Vita vya ugaidi haimayanishi kwa kila mtu lazima uliwe. We can say now, without a shred of a doubt, that there is a policy of assassinating suspects, particularly terror suspects in Kenya. Police are doing this with impunity, knowing that those in authority will actually side with them. Why are we paying judges salaries? You know, why are we paying judicial staff salaries if uh, someone be, 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 feels that, you know, I'm going to be the lawyer, prosecutor, uh, I'm going to be the judge, and I'm going to be the executioner? An existing report shows that in Kenya, one is five times more likely to be shot by a police officer than by a robber. Most of these shootings have been questioned, but in Kenya, the state is more likely to protect the police officer in question without conducting an open and thorough investigation, regardless of the scenario. The latest killing comes only two days after the exhumation of Kwekwe Mwandaza, a 14-year-old girl who was also shot by police in her house in what they claimed was self-defense. An autopsy confirmed later she died of a head injury from a high-velocity firearm which discounted an earlier police report which suggested cardiac arrest as cause of death. Both cases have strong suggestions of merciless police execution which critics now say are carried out with the impunity of men and women who feel protected by masters in high office. It is counterproductive and you are actually encouraging extremism and radicalization here at the coast. Fadiano Mundi, KTN.